Hello everyone, as promised, uh, I want to show you the full car ride model with 7 degrees of freedom. So here you consider the rigid chassis with 3 degrees of freedom and uh, they are basically the up and down motion at the center rate right XC as well as the two rotations, one for a pitch, which in this case that is theta Y and the other one for roll which is theta x. So this is roll. This is what the pitch angle. And here we neglect the yaw. Okay. And um, here we neglect the yaw as well as the x and y motion of the chassis, just the up and down, because we care about ride here, really, mostly. And we mostly define ride about the z motion. And each one of the wheels. Our four of them have their own uh, displacement, X1, X2, X3, and 4. The front of the car is here, and the back is again there. And uh, you have the right and the left. And again, the tires only have a spring, no damping for them. And um, the uh, chassis has a mass as well as two moments of inertia, IXX and IYY. The value for the parameters are shown here. And uh, the centroid located with distance of A from front, B from the back, C from the right, and D from the left. In this case, C and D are the same, but A and B are not. And so the centroid is on the front of the car in the middle. And uh, again, every displacement is measured from static equilibrium. Both angles, theta x and theta y, are small to keep uh, everything at uh, basically linear range. And here, uh, a, the displacement of the ground, xg4, is a delayed version of xg1. And x3, again, in the back, is a delayed version of xg2, where the delay are basically a plus b, the total distance over V and V is the speed of the car, similar to last time. And uh, in order to uh, draw the free body diagrams, we need to know how much each one of these corners that are attached to the uh, suspension system is moving up and down. So all of them move up with XC, and then depending on the rotation of theta X and theta Y in which direction they are positive, in this case, both along their own axis counterclockwise, then we see one of these corners is uh, going up or down for that theta x or theta y. For instance, if you look at this corner here, uh, because uh, when theta x goes counterclockwise, that point goes down, so that's due to theta x, the displacement is going to be c times theta x negative. For theta y, theta y is uh, also counterclockwise this way, so both of these points go down again. So that one also goes down as a result of theta y, where the distance is a. So it's going to be negative a theta y, negative c theta x plus cx, and this is exactly what you can see here. And then the other corners also calculated their displacements, right? At these four corners, you see their displacements are calculated. So we find that this, the difference between these four displacements and the bottom displacements of the suspensions, which are x1, 2, 3, and 4. So you see x1, 2, 3, and 4 are subtracted from these displacements for spring force and their velocities, right? Let me get rid of that so we can see the dots are uh, used for what? For this uh, damper force. And similarly on this corner, on this corner, and this corner. So here you get bigger and bigger size terms when the degrees of freedom go up and then the reaction of those uh, four forces are applied on the uh, wheels as well as the forces from the tires from below and again here like all the previous cases we assume that the ground motion is bigger than the wheel motion and the wheel motion is bigger than what than the corresponding um, top point of the displacement of the top of the shock at that point. Okay, so that x2 here is bigger than xc minus a theta y and then uh, plus d theta x. And similar thing for other corners. And again, this helps us uh, find these terms faster. 
and no gravity again because everything is from static equilibrium if you do that then you can go down to these seven differential equations all second order and uh, again the distances of a b c and d are used in the moment equations and these are the seven as i said coupled second order ODs. they have to be solved all together and that's how i did it here in simulink uh, the I use a bump, again, a half sine wave, and the same way as previous times, 25 centimeters height, 30 centimeters width, and I assume here the velocity at which the speed at which the car is passing them is about 5 meters per second, around 11 miles per hour, and I create a, a half sine wave, and then when I go to my model, I pass it also to, um, if you remember, I told you that x4 xg4 is a delayed version of xg1 so you see here that um, xg1 which is this guy is uh, also passed to xg4 with a delay and the delay is uh, a plus b in this case 3.1 meter right these two numbers added divided by uh, v which is 5 and then x2 in this case is not the same as x1 so here i assume that the front of the car when it goes on something although it's a half sine wave but the right side and the left side of it are not equal and the reason i did it because i wanted to show you also theta x because if you go on a bump that is completely uniform along the bump then you will never have a roll okay you only will get a pitch theta y you won't see a theta x so what i did i made xg2 to be a little bit bigger than xg1 so i multiplied by a gain of 1.1 here and then i uh, did again the delayed version of that by 1.1 and pass it to xg4 uh, xg3 i'm sorry Okay, so XG3 is a delayed version of XG2, so it should have the same gain as XG2. If you make these two gains one, as I told you, you will not see any theta x. Theta x will be all zero. So if you go into my MATLAB function, you see all the parameters. And all the inputs are all of the positions and the velocities, as well as the ground motions. And the outputs are the seven second derivatives right so these are those seven uh, ODs and all the parameters and you can run it for as many seconds as you want so here i'm going to run it for you so we can see the response then if you want i can go back and change that gain of 1.1 to 1 so you see if it's a uniform bump what happens so let's look at the car up and down motion the center rate xc this is the one that you feel the most you see it damps out in about five six seconds and it can go up to somewhere like uh, 4.7 4.8 centimeters okay much less than the actual bump of 25 centimeters okay so you feel some up and down motion and then it uh, dies out and these are the two angles now you see that the pitch angle theta y is quite a bit bigger than the roll angle theta x they both die out in about four or five seconds but again clearly you have more pitch and uh less roll and then these are the four x's x1 to x4 the tire displacements and in this case you see that x3 is bigger than x2 remember that three is on what uh on the back side and then you have two and then one and four okay so if you look here you might say well uh, sorry x3 is bigger than four not two x3 is the red x4 is the green and uh, remember that three is on this side four is on that side like two and one so of course two and three should be bigger than one and four because they are excited by bigger displacements and that's what you can see here the yellow curve is hidden under the blue curve you cannot see it it's right below it if you zoom in you can see a little bit of the yellow curve here and uh 
clearly you say it's some delayed response, right? So X1 and X2 on the front are first excited. X3 and X4 on the back are excited afterwards because of the time delay, of course. Okay, but they die out fast in about 2-3 seconds. But their magnitude of displacement is quite bigger because they are right over the bump. So they can go up to 31 to centimeters. Okay, so this is when you pass it with a speed of 5. Now you can change that speed. Just come back here. Wherever you see a 5, you can change it, right? And uh, as I said, if you want, if you make this gain 1, then you should not see any theta x, right? Because now the fronts go on the same bump as well as the backs. They go on the same bump. And since the bump on the left and right are equal, there should be no roll. So let me simulate that as well for you, if you want to see that. Okay, and now if you look at the angle, you see theta x is pure zero. There will be no roll, of course. Okay, so here is your 7DOF, and I'm going to share the simulating file with you. Feel free to change anything in it that you want, and even put just one side of it. If you put one side, if you make those gains zero, what does it mean? It means only the right side is going on a bump, and your left side is uh, freed, right, from the bump. Or you can put gains on the XG1 and... Um, not the XG1 here, but when they go into the system right at the end, you can put some gains of zero over there and make only the left side go over the bump, right? You should not put the gain right here because then this delayed version will not work. Okay, but uh, here is the model as I promised you. And this is the derivation of the motion of 7 DOF car model. Hopefully it was useful to you. I'll see you in my next lecture. Thank you.